This pre-tutorial video is on tables. It's for the MED1022 Population Health tutorial on biostatistics. There are many different types of tables. On the next slide, there are a few examples. But whenever you're reading journal articles, both for your research as a medical student and afterwards when you've graduated and you're looking at papers and finding out information, you'll see tables in most papers. A table of raw data is not very useful. An example would be a table of everyone's height and shoulder rotation of movement for the shoulder measurement exercise in tutorial 3. You would have seen this table in the tutorial as you were gathering the information. A summary of data is much more useful because it can be interpreted much more easily. Examples of summary tables that have already been shown in the sampling lecture associated with the height and shoulder rotation of movement exercise are a table of the mean height and shoulder rotation by gender or as was shown in the lecture, this same table by tube group. So you could see what the shoulder rotation of movement was in each tube group. This is one example of a table. We're looking at the age adjusted prevalence of type 2 diabetes in different populations in people aged 30 to 64 years. There's people from Chinese origin and people from Indian origin. Looking at the age adjusted prevalence for men and women, you can see how the age adjusted prevalence differs between countries. In Chinese origin people living in China, the rate of diabetes is men, in men is 1.6%, and in women is 0.8%. Compare that to people from Indian origin in Singapore, 22.7% of men and 10.4% of women. In order to know about tables and interpret them, you need to know of summary numbers for continuous variables. Some of these names you will have heard of before. One is central tendency. There are three different things that are used to measure this. There's the mean. This is otherwise known as the average. That's the sum of the observations divided by the number of observations. This is suitable for when the data is normal and not skewed. You would have learnt about the mean in maths methods at school. The median is the middle value, or the average of the two middle values if you've got an even number of observations. Because the, middle, the median is just the middle value, this is good for skewed data or outliers. The mode is the most frequent measurement or range of measurements but that's not used as much as the mean or the median. You can also talk about variation. You've probably heard the term standard deviation before. There's a complicated formula that you don't need to know. You just need to know that the standard deviation is the variation in observations from the mean. When the data is skewed or has outliers, Instead of using the standard deviation, we use what's called the interquartile range, or IQR instead. This is the third quartile minus the first quartile, or the 75th percentile minus the 25th percentile. So this is an example of the importance of data checking, because there are some rather unusual values in missing data. This was when I was doing my honours project in 2005. I was using the cardiac surgery data set 
from 2001 to 2004. When I first got my hands on the data set and I was getting my head around all of the variables, there were over 200, so it was a little bit overwhelming at first. I started doing some simple descriptive statistics. The mean, standard deviation, minimum and maximum. The maximum body mass index in this data set was 2,844.44. This rather shocked me because I know that a normal BMI is between 20 and 25 and a BMI of over 30 is regarded as obese. I immediately went to talk to my supervisor and we decided that we needed to investigate this further. There were actually many values that could be considered an outlier. There were, there were 42 people with a BMI of 48 or over, and there were 13 people with a BMI of over 100. So we decided that we would actually check everyone with a body mass index of 48 or over. Remember that the body mass index is your weight in kilograms divided by your height in metres squared. And you can see on the slide what the standard deviation and maximum was of the BMI before the data was checked and also afterwards. A maximum body mass index of 68.4 is certainly still very big, still morbidly obese, but definitely more believable than the maximum before. And the standard deviation also is much more believable after checking 4.8 as opposed to 30.6. So as a result of asking for all of the BMIs over 48 to be double checked, we discovered that there were some height and weight entry errors. I'm 163 centimetres tall and about 60 kilograms. If you put my height and weight into the calculation the wrong way round, I end up with a body mass index of over 500 instead of about 22. We also discovered that the maximum body mass index of 2,800 was due to a height of 15 centimetres being recorded. So while we were waiting for all the data be, to be checked, it became the running joke. Has Tom Thumb been corrected yet? After corrections, as you can see, the statistics were a lot more believable. So when you're looking at tables in journal articles, always use common sense. Just like I used common sense when I was looking at the body mass index to find an obvious error that had not been identified before.